Yo, what's going on? Smitty here, Amazing Crosses, and um, thank you for checking us out here on Instagram, on um, Unstrung, Unfiltered. Guys, we're doing a live session up at this joint. I am um, I just got this racket. I, I figured I was going to go live and um, hopefully have this video on deck. What it is was uh, this guy, this client came in and was like, hey, I'm um, starting to play tennis again, or I'm starting to play tennis. This is my wife's racket, and uh, she has some old strings on there, and which I found out was an NXT control. Uh, it looks like it was in okay shape, however, you know, the tension is probably gone by now. He hits a little bigger, so he was like, hey, he wants something a little bit more um, controlling, a little more spin. So I was like, hey, you have an oversized rack, you gotta, you know, get all those, um, all those options in this racket. However, I can run a hybrid for you and um, see what you think about that. And, and he said, okay. And right there, it was like 40 bucks, easily. Guys. I'm using um, a reel of um, adrenaline, which is what retail for like 150, 160, and um, and the other I'm gonna do a cross with NXT, which is like I said in another post, the, one of the best uh, multi-filament out there on the market. So right there, off, off of that, just half, half, like what, 20 feet and 20 feet of uh, of poly and, and multi, I, I made. 40 bucks. Guys, it's very important as a stringer that you um, utilize uh, your options. You know, have options for your clients. That's why I say having a poly and having a, a multi in hand and a synthetic gun is, is, is golden. You can mix these up. And I'm not saying charge more for hybrids. I'm just saying charge more for the string value. Um, keep your, um, obviously, your string prices um, on lockdown, obviously. You know, have that as a standard. However, you can increase your ticket sales by, um, you know, having string options for them. So he would have just came here and was like, hey, I can just use any string. Like, no, you can educate and say, well, if you use synthetic gut, it's a great string. It lasts forever. However, uh, it's not the best option for you because, you know, um, tension drops and it's nylon. And, you know, you might not necessarily break it. It's great for uh, cheap strings. However, that's what it's meant for. It's supposed to be changed out pretty often as it loses tension more than you know, polyester multi wool. And he was like, oh, you know what? Give me something that will give... Usually, the, usually most clients will want the best for, the, for, the, for themselves. And, and, and sometimes it's a money issue, and which is an easier way to negate from that is, hey, um, don't cheap up on your strings. You know, just be like, hey, the value of the string is there. You're gonna play better, you get easy on your arms. Um, so. Let's say if I, I charge them 45 for that racket setup, or this racket setup, I could have been like, hey, uh, I can do 45 for you. He's like, oh, that's a little too much. Like, hey, how about this? I'll throw you in a free grip and stuff like that. And there's small things that you can defer and you know, you know, have add-ons that can just increase your sales here and there. However, I feel like um, this option is one of the best things. If you have a hybrid uh, setup, you will make more money. People are willing to pay more. For, for hybrids any day. And of course, you can have like, you can have um, lesser hybrids, and I'm saying, you know, it doesn't have to be like Luxalon and, and XT, but it could be like, um, it could be Wilson Revolve and, um, and Sensation for all I care. As long as you're giving them options, when, you, when they have a lot of options, that means they're like, hey, you're the expert, you do your thing. And, um, and I feel like that's a big sell point. Whenever a client comes to you and they're like, hey, um, you're giving me some value, you know, they're, they're, it's up to everybody's, um, this guy, you know, everybody wants to fix something, and, and the key questions to ask is like, and the key questions to ask is like, one thing I do is like, hey, what don't you like about your strings? What do you like about your string? And, and with those, I can help them say, man, I hate how it feels so tight, it's kind of stiff, uh, I feel like I'm hitting a brick. Boom, right in the head as a string, you should already know, well, he, the tension's probably too high. Maybe if I lively it up a little bit, maybe he's not a poly, but hey man, uh, my, my arm kind of hurts. I'm not trying to find anything that, I used to use full poly and it hurts my arm. Boom, you know what to do. You can offer them a hybrid, you can offer them a, a lower string setup. Uh, you can offer them different strings, you can offer them different rackets. Give them options. People love options, especially nowadays where we're in a world of just like information. People can do that, oh, well I read about that. Trust me, these people who are coming, they know a little bit of something. But um, but it's up to you as a tennis professional or a racket professional um, to know uh, what's great for them. So it's one, two, three, four, three. Um, so with that being said, I'm running his cross. Um, so I, I, I'm gonna piggyback on yesterday's how I started my crosses, and um, uh, what I have is 
the cross here, I do my second one, I bring the top one, and here's my analogy for this, I guess somebody um, commented to me on this, and uh, they were talking about, um, hey, you're, doing, you're not getting a reference tension, it's like, well, if you think about it, okay, so see this, if I'm pulling a number two, yes, it's splitting up the tension on this at the tail end here, so when I go back at the end, it should pull a little bit of that and, and then get the reference tension correct. So let me show you what I'm talking about. He's saying that, so a lot of people, what they do is they, he's like, I, I always, I, 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 um, I, I um, what's it called? I pull the tension on the first knot, on the first cross. Anyway, so I'm pulling on the second cross. I, I'm equalizing, even if I equalize, I don't have to. This right here at this main intersection, uh, this junction, this is pulling reference sense. I, I don't care what anybody says, because right now, yes, there's less, if the top one might not be, but the second one for sure, even at this, I'm locking on in. I pre-weave the third one, and we can go about this. And um, so, uh, so what people would do is tighten the first cross, tighten the second cross, third, fourth, and go all the way down, go back, because you let go of your starting time, you have to retension that, or else it's gonna, uh, the, um, the reference tension will be um, dropped. So how do you compensate for that? You, you know what I'm saying? So let me reiterate this again. Those who use your starting clamp, pull the first one. So you did a pull on the first one. You pull on second, third, fourth, fifth, all the way down to your, your crosses. Um, and then you go back and then um, you have to pull tension to this to put the clamp on. You just did a, um, a double tension. Like that's a waste of time. Plus you, you are straining that string. So you're doing worse. Uh, than what I've done, which is um, at the end, I'm gonna come back here and pull tension, true tensions on this, on reference tension, and then tie it off. That means I already did one tension and one pass through. Um, for me, the less strain on the string is best for me. And, um, and you, people say that all they want. I don't think you can get fully true, um, pure reference tension with that first cross. Um, just because there's so many variables. There's a starting clamp there, there's a tie-off. So even the tie-off itself, you're gonna lose a little bit unless you use a, um, a, a knot function and you, t and you do it correctly in the same exact time. Um, so I, I think it's funny that um, people would challenge you on, on different techniques. However, if this was a tournament and told me, hey, I want you to do the starting, um, starting um, crosses like this verbatim, obviously I would be dumb not to follow that direction. So. Uh, I think it's funny how people, hey, everybody has their idea of the best things. This guy, well, I've been traveling around the world, I did many seminars, and that's how you start the crosses. Like, well, freaking, so did Galileo and all these other, you know, uh, if they didn't break the rules once in a while, you think they will be where they are now? It's just funny. Also, at this angle, I like to have a starting, uh, I, I like to use my, um, my table lock so it doesn't get onto the side here. Yeah, I think it's amazing. So guys, if you like the content, tell me what you do. How do you start your crosses? How do you start your mains? Um, do you do a double pull on the first one? Do you, uh, and I'm not saying that it's wrong, um, you know, going back and then retensioning that first one, but I'm saying, I, I wouldn't say it's necessary. However, if you're saying my technique's not great, I think that technique's even worse, uh, in my opinion. You're doing a double, you know, you're doing a double, um, what's it called, double tension on it. So that's just my opinion, my cup of tea. You can argue all you want at the end of the day. Um, we haven't gotten this far doing the wrong thing. And it, let's say if I do do it consistently every single time with that reference on that on that first cross or, or that second cross, unless you're hitting off center, that nobody really really nobody really cares. It sounds so bad, but no, I'm gonna tell you right now straight up, nobody gives a darn about those first two and the first last crosses or the last two mains. I know people used to like test it to see how how the tension is, but like honestly. Um, those are, if you're hitting on your off-center shots there anyway, you're in the wrong already. I mean, you're supposed to be hitting in the middle. Everything in the middle counts. I figured the furthest strings on, on like the, either it's the ninth or the eight mains or the top one or 19 or 20, whatever on the bottom, those are the least, uh, it does not change the dynamic tension. Let's say all about that. Those strings and, and the minuscule of, of tension reference does not change the dynamic tension of, of the racket, in my opinion. Anyway, guys, if you like what you see, subscribe. Hit us up on um, our comments. DM us through Instagram and stuff like that. And peace.